When solving percentage problems rather than using a proportion, I like to um, use uh, the words in a non-story problem like this one. It says here that 34, the number 34, is. Well, the word is stands for equals. 68% it says, so that's 0.68. And this word of, a number, of something, of means to multiply. 0.68 of x, or times x. So um, something, uh, sometimes I like to go is equals percentage times of for a non-story problem situation is equals percent times of and and then you can put in the two things that you know out of three and then we're going to solve for x so we're going to divide both sides by 0.68 and I'm going to erase this now 34 divided by 0.68 is 50 and you could just say to yourself does it seem reasonable that 68 percent does it seem that 68 percent of 50, you can just take your calculator, 0.68 times 50, and see if that is 34 as a check for yourself. So again, 48 is, that's what's all alone. It says what, you know, what. That's, that's your x. And then of means to multiply, so times 64. And so we divide both sides by 64 to get x alone. And we find out that 48 divided by 64 is 0.75, which represents 75%. Again, 48 is 75% of 64. Yeah, that seems to check. When I work a word problem that involves percentages, I'm looking for words and phrases like total taxable income. I'm looking for the percentage. I'm also looking for things that might represent a portion, a part of, because I'm typically taking a percentage times a total, a percentage times a total to get some portion. In this case, it's um, the portion would be the amount of federal taxes I would pay from my total taxable income. So I am looking um, if the amount of money that is paid for the federal income tax was $23,350, that's the portion that was paid. So 23,350. And I know that I'm in the 28% tax bracket. Then I could multiply that by X, which would represent my total income times 28% would give us the part we paid to federal taxes. And then I would divide both sides by 0.28. And I'd find out that Javon's federal taxes, uh, or I'm sorry, that the salary that those taxes are paid on is $83,392 and 86 cents. Again, you could check that by taking 28% of that number and see if it turns out to be 23,350. Okay, if 7 is added to 3 times a number, a number x, the result is, the result is means equals 31 more than, more than means plus, not times, 31 more than the number x. Find that number. So x represents, represents an, a number, and I tried to read it with some inflection and, and some symbols. So let's go back and, and go over this again. 7, 7 
is added to three times a number. So let's go seven is added to three times a number. The result is, the result is 31. This number 31. 31 more than, and finally at the end of that sentence, more than the number. And I'm good to go now. So I'll go ahead and solve this for x. So I'll subtract x from both sides. Uh, I'm going to try something on you here. I know I'm going to have a 2x on the left, so I'm going to get rid of the 7 on the left and therefore get it on the right. So the 3x minus the 1x would be a 2x right here. And 31 minus 7 is 24. And now I divide both sides by 2. And I find out that the number that I'm looking for is the number 12. And I could kind of take that back into the sentence and say to myself, if 7 is added to 3 times that number, 3 times that number is 36, add 7 to that, and I get 43. I'm just kind of doing a mental check. The result is... 31 more than the number, 31 more than the number, 12 plus 31. Oh, that is 43. Oh, good. That looks like it checks without even putting it into the original equations, but thinking of it in terms of the sentence. Okay, two of the longest running TV series are Gunsmoke and The Simpsons. So we're just kind of getting a feel, second sentence. Gunsmoke ran 97 fewer, be thinking about that word, than twice the number of the Simpsons. So we're comparing the TV series Gunsmoke to the Simpsons. And when we do that, when we compare one thing to something else, that something else represents our letter X. So X is going to represent the number of Simpson episodes. So we should always state what our variable represents and then come back to that very same sentence again and then just pay attention to that the fact that there's 97 fewer which means subtract than twice the number of Simpsons. So we better put twice the number of Simpsons down, and then there's 97 fewer than that. So the 97's got to be at the end. 2x minus 97 represents the number of Gunsmoke episodes. Whew, okay, now we're ready. We know that between the two of these, the total number of episodes was 998. So x represents the number of episodes for The Simpsons. Maybe it was 300. And then Gunsmoke would be 998 minus the 300, or 698. But I don't know what it is. It's x and it's 2x minus 97 that represent the sum total of 998 episodes. Again, these expressions represent the, the number of episodes of each series. And now the parentheses don't mean anything. I'm just trying to represent the fact that this is Simpsons and that this phrase represents gun smoke for a total of 98. Now I'll drop the parentheses and this 1x and this 2x adds to be 3x. And then next I'm going to add 97 to both sides. I'm trying to show you all the steps along the way. And so let's see, 15, 9, 9, 18, 19, carry the 1,095. And then you divide both sides by 3 to find out how many episodes X is. And X represents the number of episodes for The Simpsons. I have X is 365 episodes. And I'm going to put a little, a big S here for Simpsons. And then I would have to take two times that answer, minus 97, 
and that would give me 633, do that again, 633 episodes of Gunsmoke, and I would just, as, as a kind of a, a quick check, just check to see if the 365 and the 633, see if they add up to be the 998, because that's the number of total shows, and it sure looks like they do. Absolutely, it does. Um, very good. I could check it in the original two statements as well. Okay, property taxes on a $180,000 house are $4,000. At this rate, how much tax would be paid on a more expensive home? a $216,000 home. So what we really have to have you understand is if you choose to set up the value of the home in the numerator refraction for a proportion divided by the tax amount, you have to be sure on the other side of the equal sign to put the value of a different home over its tax amount. So it doesn't matter if you put value on top, tax amount on the bottom. If But once you make that decision, you have to be consistent for the other side of the equal sign. So in our situation, we've got a, a value of $180,000 and a tax amount of $4,000. So I'm going to have $180,000, and I might even put here that that's the value of this home on taxes of $4,000. And I think I'm going to put here tax, real lightly. On the right side of this equal sign, which is going to finish out this proportion, I have a $216,000 home. That's its value. And I want to know what its tax is its tax amount. And so I'm going to go ahead and set the cross products equal in this proportion because do remember, I'm going to erase this over here for right now, see if I can get this to erase, um, that the cross products would be set equal to one another. So the 4,000 times the 2, oops, I need another 0, um, times the 216000 needs to be set equal to the 180,000x. And then uh, the 4,000 times the 216,000 is 864 million. And now I've got to divide by this 180,000, both sides. So when I divide this by 180,000, I've got to divide this statement by 180,000. And I find out that X will be $4,800. You know, I expected it to go up. The amount of taxes is $4,800 because uh, the previous home, the $180,000 home, was less expensive and so a lower taxable amount to the $216,000 home.